but how she treated and what she did with government secrets when she was Secretary of State and what she said about what she did both before and after she got caught exquisitely sums up the case against her presidency. She sent and received secret and top secret and beyond top secret information and emails on an unsecure private email system instead of on the secure government system. And she did it without authorization. She said falsely that there was no classified information. She said falsely that what she did was authorized. And what else did she say? She said, and these are her words, when we traveled to sensitive places like Russia, we often received warnings from department security officials to leave our Blackberries, laptops, anything that communicated with the outside world on the plane with their batteries removed to prevent foreign intelligence services from compromising them. And then she added falsely, even in friendly settings, we conducted business under secret security precautions, taking care when and how we read secret material and used our technology. That's from her book, which is entitled, ironically, Hard Choices. Hard choices indeed. In reality, we now know that she chose to use her private email overseas in countries that were hostile to the United States and that have sophisticated hacking capability. Although her system was so remarkably primitive, the FBI couldn't figure out whether or not it had been hacked. We do know that the emails of people she communicated with were hacked. So I guess about her emails, we're soon going to hear the same infamous question that we heard about the death of four Americans in Benghazi. What difference at this point does it make? Well, Secretary Clinton, it makes a big difference. The United States is the only country in the world that was founded based not on blood or land, but based on a law, the Constitution. Hillary Clinton is running for an office, the presidency, whose powers and duties are defined by that law. The most important power that that law gives the president is to be commander-in-chief of the armed forces to protect the country. That law imposes really only one substantive duty on the president, and that is, as written in the Constitution, to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. That law, the Constitution, specifically requires that before taking up those powers and duties, the president swear to an oath, and it's the only oath that's set forth in the Constitution, to faithfully execute the office and to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Hillary Clinton took a similar oath before she became Secretary of State. You know what that adds up to? What that adds up to is that Hillary Clinton is asking the people of this country, the people of the United States, to make her the first president in history to take the constitutional oath of office after already having violated it. The message, the message from this convention to everyone watching these proceedings and the message to her should be loud, clear, and short. No way, Hillary. No way on earth. Thank you very much.